Aang has a secret son that you don't know about and I can prove it, so stay tuned. In The Legend of Korra, Aang was revealed to have three children, Tenzin, Bumi, and Kaya. But what if I told you there's a strong chance that Aang actually had another child? A kid he kept secret from the world. A kid that was exiled and had his bending taken away. A kid before his current family ever even existed. I know, I know, it sounds like a long shot. It really does. And you probably think I'm crazy, but just hear me out because it really does make a lot of sense. First, let's establish the groundwork. Avatar The Last Airbender has its own events and lore, right? The Legend of Korra has its own events and lore, right? There is this vague middle area right here where things are left up into interpretation, such as Sokka's death, who was Toph's husband, was Aang a bad father, who was Zuko's wife, things of that nature. And this is kind of one of those things. So because it wasn't directly stated in The Legend of Korra, doesn't mean it can be easily dismissed. Now, I don't want you guys getting mad at me for stating the obvious here, like you got somewhere to be or something, because I read your comments, I know if I don't state the obvious. Well, do you guys remember how in The Legend of Korra, when harmonic convergence happened and Zaheer was one of those few lucky people who got airbending? Now, what's strange about this is he was already very good at airbending from the moment he got it. He was able to take on the likes of literal masters. Uh, not only was he amazing at airbending, but he was also very knowledgeable about air nomad culture and philosophy. Now, why? Why was that? Was he just a fan? No, I don't think so. And a lot of fans don't think so. Because there is a popular fan theory that Zaheer is actually Aang's son. Now before you easily dismiss this, uh, just listen to the theory, then make your own judgments after you watch the entire video. Now, in the canon universe of Avatar, Aang had his first son, Tenzin, at the age of 31, which is just a little bit late for the Avatar world. This fan theory actually fixes that. Aang actually had his first son when he was a young adult, and this kid would be named Zaheer. Aang would go on to keep this son a secret and not tell anyone about him. After all, this was the first airbender born in over 100 years. He wouldn't want anything to happen to him. Much like the stuff we know with Tenzin, Aang would be laser focused on on passing down as much air nomad wisdom as possible to this kid. He would take him all around the world visiting multiple different air temples, teaching him all about these air nomad ideologies and philosophies and really pushing this stuff down his throat. Now usually when parents force their kids to learn material, two things can happen. One, they just stop learning about it as soon as they're able to, or two, they become obsessed. Zaheer would go down the obsession route. He would read way too deep into Air Nomad ideology and different Air Nomad philosophers. He would draw his own conclusion to these vague quotes and what they would mean, and this would be the basis for his anarchist views. As we saw in The Legend of Korra, Zaheer would deeply look up to Guru Lahima, and Guru Lahima's quotes are always left very vague and up into interpretation. Zaheer would would base his entire worldviews and ideologies off of misconstruing Guru Lahima's quotes and becoming an anarchist. As you guys all know, this is the complete opposite of what air nomads are. Air nomads are pacifists and they don't want to harm anybody, but Zaheer was willing to drop his pacifist views and use his airbending to harm others. In this theory, Zaheer would go on to do something horrible, maybe try to take out a world leader or something of that nature, or maybe just hurt other people using his airbending. And of course, Aang would not approve of this and take Take away his bending and banish him. From here, Zaheer would begin to resent the Avatar. He would put together a team of like-minded individuals to take the Avatar down once and for all. He would do this because he believed that no one should be able to possess that kind of power, not even the Avatar. Zaheer would go on and create the Red Lotus and recruit people to the Red Lotus that would be easy to convince of his plans. He would recruit Plea, who would come from the same family as Combustion Man, and Plea would want the Avatar gone because her family died trying to track down the Avatar. He would go on to recruit Unalak, who is obsessed with the spirit world, and just spirits in general, I don't know, he's kind of weird. Uh, Zaheer would tell him about the history of the first Avatar with Wan and Rava, and how the first Avatar split Rava and Vatu and separated the physical world and the spirit world. This would be Unalak's basis for joining the Red Lotus. Uh, the other two members are currently unknown, as we have uh, little backstory for either of them, so theorizing why they would join is just, just useless. After recruiting his team, 
Well, you guys know the rest of the story. Uh, they'd be stopped by Zuko, Sokka, Tarlock, and Tenzin. Now, the thing I find most interesting about this theory is that it all comes full circle. So, in The Legend of Korra Season 2, Unalak would get the spirit world and physical world combined again by having Korra open the portals. He would cause harmonic convergence, which would not only get the world closer to its natural order of things, but also get his old teammate, Zaheer, back his airbending. Unalak might have been a little bit successful. He was able to do parts of his plan, and he was able to sever the avatar cycle from Korra, but he wasn't able to actually finish the job. And that's where Zaheer comes in, to finish the original goal of ending the avatar cycle once and for all. So even though he failed, the Red Lotus was able to get a second chance. To me, with everything coming full circle, this theory is super believable, along with the fact that Zaheer was instantly a master at airbending. Well, not a, not a technical master, but he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with literal masters in his first ever year of bending. Does that not seem a a little strange to you guys. Uh, people may argue that his fighting style made it easy for him to pick up airbending. Well, I don't see why that would be the case because Boomy, who was Aang's child and a commander in the military, had a really hard time picking up airbending. You don't think he knew how to fight as well? Or you don't think Aang ever taught him anything at all? I do get how Aang banishing his own son doesn't really sit right with a lot of people. So here is a second version of events that may even explain things better about Zaheer and Aang. In this theory, Zaheer would not be Aang's secret son, but he would be an air acolyte training under Aang, learning the ways of the air nomads, but without actually being a bender. He would become Aang's number one student, knowing everything there is to know about air nomad culture and philosophy. However, being Aang's number one student, he would feel like he earned the right to be a bender himself. He would then bring up the idea to Aang about using his energy bending to give him air bending so he can help restore the air nation even further. Now, after Aang refused this idea, Zaheer Zaheer would begin to resent him and the Avatar, and then the events would unfold the same as I mentioned earlier. Do I believe any of these theories? Well, I'll say this. There is 1000% room for the creators to go ahead and honestly make either of these theories canon, and it really wouldn't be the most shocking thing to happen with this franchise. Uh, the creators did leave pretty much all of the Red Lotus' backstories a mystery, only sprinkling in just enough lore so they wouldn't feel out of place. Uh, they also left Zaheer alive, and with his bending intact. So if they eventually wanted to go down this route in the future, the door is open for them to do so. If I had to pick a side, I think Zaheer being a rogue era acolyte uh, rather than Aang's son is cooler. It's a lot cooler and it makes more sense. It really does. Both of these theories sound pretty good. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think about both of them. I'm going to be reading every single one of your comments. I really want to know you guys' take on this. Uh, if you think I'm stupid, just say it. If you think this is the greatest theory ever, go ahead and say it. Uh, I have another video coming out later this this month covering Sokka's death. I'm going super hard on that video. I got an entire comic book commissioned, so be on the lookout for that. Um, if you guys want to know more about who makes my thumbnails, it's in the description down below. Anyways, pretty much it. Peace out, everybody. I just caught you staying past the outro. I don't know why you did, but you did. Uh, if you're still here, comment down below. Korra is better than Aang, and let's confuse everybody else in the comment section who didn't stay. Okay, for real this time, goodbye.